Welcome to our lecture online. Now in this video, we're going to touch upon something that's actually really important in data analysis when we analyze a bunch of data, trying to figure out what is really going on. And usually, not enough data is accumulated to make sensible conclusions from what we're actually looking at. So in this case, again, we're, lo we're dealing with a loaded die. We want to try to figure out how many sixes we will throw with this die and of course, we're looking for the experimental probability. We're not looking for the theoretical probability because we don't know what it is. But after many, many trials of doing, for example, tossing the die 10 times, 50 different times, so a total of 500 tosses, we're going to get a feel for what the probability will be that we'll throw a six with this particular die. But how do we know that we've converged to the correct number? And that's really the key. So again, how can we tell we're converging? When do we have enough data to work with so we can make reasonable conclusions? And that is misused in so many places. And so this is actually very important when it comes to that. So what we can do, and this is one technique that I like to use, is we can group the data in batches, perhaps in batches of five or batches of 10 or 20 or 50, however large the data set is. So what I've done here is I've grouped them in batches of 10. Sometimes I will try it different ways to see what it looks like, but in this case I chose batches of 10, and what I did then in each batch, I looked at the greatest difference between the highest number and the lowest number in the batch, and so that's the greatest difference between any of the two cumulative relative frequencies, or in this case, cumulative probabilities. So for the first 10 numbers, you can see since there's a lot of fluctuation, the largest delta between the highest and lowest value in that group is 0 0.240. Then I looked at the next 10 numbers and again looked for the highest and lowest number, took the difference and noticed it had gone down quite a bit, which means it's really beginning to converge. Then I looked at the third set and again the difference between the highest and lowest value is smaller again. So you want to keep doing that. If for some reason on the next batch it goes up again, then you know you're not anywhere near convergence yet. So you want to keep going. But here the trend looks pretty good. Then I took a look at the next 10 numbers and again the number had become smaller. Not a lot smaller, but again smaller. And then when I looked at the last 10 numbers, notice it had gone down all the way to 0.005. So that means that the cumulative relative frequency was really beginning to converge. And you can say that if you take the average of these values, then you might say that it probably will converge to some value between the lowest and highest. The lowest is 0.604, the highest is 0.609. So you know that you're getting close probably to a number that you're converging to. And that's a really good way to see if you've collected enough data or if things are continuing to change. For example, you want to keep, make sure that as long as this number remains large, you just simply want to collect more and more data. When the number becomes very, very small, and it does that for several consecutive groups, then you're probably home free, and you've got enough data to make reasonable conclusions. Again, very important, I've seen lots of applications where they don't have enough data, and they make conclusions, and all kinds, of, uh, all kinds of decisions based on insufficient amount of data before you really can make sure you have what you need in order to make those decisions. And that is how it's done.